Hey Diana, are you ready? Or we're getting ready to shoot here. Be there in a minute. While Superman and Batman dominate the public mind, Wonder Woman is the often cast-aside female factor of the spandex fisticuff club. I'm Michael Nixon. And I'm Diana DeKylo, and let's get this whip cracking. It's a lasso of truth, actually. Whatever. Between origin stories and costume changes, Wonder Woman can be a bit of a conundrum even to the loyal follower. We're here to give you a geek crash course on the often cast-aside member of DC's trinity of superheroes. resident of the mysterious girls-only Greco-Roman Paradise Island of Themyscira is an Amazonian princess with the battle skills to prove it. <sighs> Ever since her first appearance in All-Star Comics issue 8, Wonder Woman has been the female icon of the superpower set and is the only member of DC Comics' trinity of superheroes. She has super strength, super speed, and super reflexes and is able to bounce bullets off her bracelets and throw her tiara like a boomerang. Wonder Woman's set of cool toys also includes the Lasso of Truth, which can catch criminals and forces them to tell the truth with the ancient power of magic. While some versions of the character feature her infamous invisible jet, Wonder Woman's been able to fly on her own since the 60s. Wonder Woman's original weakness was that she would lose her powers if she were chained up by a man. This has understandably been dropped since the original stories. Definitely one of Wonder Woman's more oddball gadgets, her earrings provide her oxygen when she goes underwater or into outer space. While Batman is based in the grim and gritty, and Superman is pure science fiction, Wonder Woman is a work of magic and mysticism. Diana was born when the Amazon queen, Hippolyta, molded the shape of a baby into the magical clay that surrounded Themyscira. With a blessing from the six Greek deities that protected the island, Diana became a flesh-and-blood Amazon princess. The goddess Demeter gave her the strength of Gaia, or Mother Earth. Aphrodite, goddess of love, gave her beauty and a loving heart. Athena, goddess of war and wisdom, gave her knowledge and battle skill. Diana knows any language, including alien languages, as a result. Hestra, goddess of hearth and home, gave her the fires of truth, which Diana can channel into her golden lasso to make those trapped in it unable to lie. And finally, Hermes, the messenger god, gave her the power of speed and flight. Diana can't fly for extended periods as it takes all her concentration, so she later acquired the invisible jet she uses for more long-distance trips. Given her bracelets, lasso, and costume, Diana ventures out from the protected Themyscira into the modern world as an ambassador to her homeland, using the name Diana Prince to blend in. There she meets love interest Steve Trevor and battles menaces ranging from Nazis to evil Greek gods to the female supervillain, the Cheetah. Where the upcoming reboot of DC Comics' entire line leaves this origin in question, it looks like Diana will be maintaining her Amazonian heritage. Whether or not the magical nature of Wonder Woman's powers and history will stand remains to be seen. The clanging together of Wonder Woman's bracelets creates a supersonic sound that can stop Superman in his tracks. Wonder Woman has had a surprising number of appearances outside the comic medium. She's been featured in a number of TV series and animated adventures. When it comes to live action, Wonder Woman joins Superman and Batman in having a TV show under her golden belt with the classic 1970s series starring Linda Carter. The first season takes place in World War II and features Wonder Woman battling Nazis and other threats as a member of the U.S. military. Later seasons brought the character into the modern world and turned the show into a more standard action adventure series. The series is best known for the twirling change Diana Prince used to become Wonder Woman. Beyond that, Wonder Woman has consistently appeared in a number of animated shows as a member of the Justice League. She was a regular member of the Super Friends, featured prominently in the 2000s Justice League and Justice League Unlimited cartoon series, and has most recently appeared as a guest star in an episode of Batman Brave and the Bold. An animated film starring the character was released in 2009, which featured a modern take on the origin story and brought together a number of elements from different eras of the character. Wonder Woman has gone through a range of costume changes that range from modern to straight-up mom. Her classic look is best represented in the 70s TV series, but other looks from the comics include a hip all-white pants suit, a battle-ready golden armor, and a more modern look that includes pants and a jacket. Here are some great places to start if you're looking to get into the adventures of Wonder Woman. The classic 70s TV show we refer to, starring Linda Carter, is always a great starting point and was my introduction into the character. We would also highly recommend the 2009 animated film starring Carrie Russell as Wonder Woman and Nathan Fillion as Steve Trevor.
While well, looking around for tales of our favorite Amazonian princess, we here at Geek Crash Course would advise you to avoid the Wonder Woman pilot, but not the one you think. We don't mean the recent one. We mean the failed pilot to the 70s-era Wonder Woman series, featuring a track-suited, blonde, and powerless Wonder Woman and co-starring Ricardo Montalban as the villain. This low-end pilot might have been formed from magic cheese instead of magic clay. Each week on Geek Crash Course, we ask an extra credit question. If you tweet or email us the correct answer, you could be featured as next week's Geek of the Week. This week's Geek of the Week is Elizabeth H. from Reading, PA. She correctly answered that Captain America's favorite food is apple pie. Wonder Woman, like many classic heroes, has had a sidekick. Can you name at least two women who have taken on the role of Wonder Girl? That's it for this week's edition of Geek Crash Course. You can follow us on Twitter at Geek Crash Course, or email us through our contact page on geekcrashcourse.com. Feel free to ask questions, email comments, or suggest topics for future episodes. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Geek Crash Course.